Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It's January 22nd. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontorek. And we're here with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we have today in the studio with us Pearl Sun from Come From Away. The Yay. Broadway smash. The Broadway Come smash. From Away. The 912 musical. And we will get that to that shortly, but first, our top five. One of everybody's favorite movies is Eyeing the Stage, and it is very exciting. Yes, yeah, so 12 year old Paul is flipping oh. out <laughs> because the here Karate right Kid is heading to the stage. I was so into the Karate Kid. Did back. you wax on and wax off? Wax on, wax <laughs> off. This was such a huge movie for me when I was a kid. And everyone so else. I was too. very excited by this. Uh, producers Kamiko Yoshi, Michael Wolk, and the Kanisha Group announced today that they're starting a journey to bring this beloved movie to the stage. Interesting. Uh, renowned Japanese director Eamon Miyamoto has signed on to helm the new musical. Cool. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I like that. Um, it will feature a book from the film's screenwriter, Robert Mark Heyman, and a score by Drew Gasparini. This is oh, really Caitlin's exciting. I love that. Fantastic uh, New York songwriter. Um, MTV Video Music Award nominees Keone and Mari Madrid, I hope I said your name right, will co choreograph. So, this already seems like such an interesting group of yeah. people, and Derek McLean is doing the sets, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> so The Karate Kid, for those of you who don't know, is about Daniel LaRusso, who is taught to defend himself in a tournament against his bullies by the wise Mr. Miyagi. And like Beth said, he he, he learns how to wax on, wax off, That's just watch it. Yeah, just watch um, it. It came out in 1984. Mm -hmm. There was a Karate we Kid 2. Yes. There was a Karate Kid 3. Yes. There was a next Karate Kid where Hillary yeah. Swank I missed that was one. a girl version. <laughs> I'm sure it was and, amazing. Uh, and Pat Morita, the fantastic Pat Morita, um, the late great, uh, played Mr. Miyagi. And of course, yes. um, what? Yes, I'm, I'm waiting for you to say it. I know what <laughs> you're going to say. And then Jaden Smith did it. <gasps> oh. Of course, that's what you were that's waiting what you were for. Yeah. Is that your Karate Kid? That's, no, that's not mine. I mean, I'm assuming like there's different kid. generations. No, they're um, With Jackie Chow um, and Ralph Macchio. Ralph Ma I was waiting for you to say Ralph Macchio. Ralph Macchio. <laughs> and now, interestingly, Ralph Macchio was so, so huge for me. And The Outsiders is also becoming... So we've gotten to the Ralph Macchio. Is that we're what we're doing? We're into the Ralph Macchio we're era. We're through the Ralph Macchio IMDb page We are now. in the golden age of and Ralph you know, Macchio musicals. Speaking of the Karate Finally. Kid legacy, even more recently there was a TV show called Cobra Kai, which was a modern day spin-off where Ralph Macchio played the character as an adult. Anyway, what? there's a whole legacy of Karate Kid mythology. <laughs> I knew and none I'm of this. And I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Daniel LaRusso sing to his bullies. No I'm casting yet. That's so the character's this. name. Okay. Super yeah. excited, though. Clearly. Yeah, <laughs> and a very timely news story today is that this star is coming back to The Rock on Broadway. Oh, my God, you guys. Rachel Tucker. Ah. Rachel Tucker. We're very come from away today. Rachel Tucker is coming to Broadway's Come From Away, of course. She did it in the West End and got an Olivia nomination. Yeah. She's playing the role that was originated by Jen Colella and is uh, currently being played by Becky Goldsvig. Yes. Becky Goldsvig will take her final bow in the role on March 1st. And then Rachel Tucker, the people's alphabet. That's going to be her, will, in, her in the sky. She will, <laughs> that, yes, she will play the pilot uh, on March 3rd. She's coming. So there you go. Cool. I'm into it. Very into it. Very into it. Yes. And this one night concert just, it keeps getting better and better. You know, you can get amazing people to do a thing for one night. Tell me more. I mean, look at the cast <laughs> of the 50th anniversary concert of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Longest yes. title ever. Mm -hmm. um, for Manhattan's concert productions. So we just found out some new stars. Andy Carl and Orfe will play Potiphar and Potiphar's wife. Chuck Cooper is playing Jacob. Merle Dandridge is Pharaoh. Brooks Osmanskis is Baker. Gavin Lee is Butler. Uh, J. Armstrong Johnson is Reuben, Bonnie Milligan is Gad, Michael Kilgore is Judah. This is, I mean, what a group of people. And they're joining Noah Galvin, who's playing Joseph, Eden Espinosa, Alex Newell, Jessica Vosk are all going to sing their faces off as the narrator. They're all sharing the role. Uh, Michael Arden is directing. This is good. Let's just move this to Broadway. Can you guys all sign up <laughs> for a Broadway you said run? One night. Okay. okay. So it's one night, February 17th, 8 o'clock at the David Geffen Hall at Lincoln Center. So you got to be there because look at that group. Mm -hmm. Great group. And even more UK audiences can see this show before it comes over to our side of the pond. Okay, let me walk you through this okay. one. Okay. Okay. This is called Baby Ranger. Don't ask me why I don't know. It's a solo show written and performed by Richard Gad, and it's going to transfer to the West End's Ambassador Theatre uh, this spring. Okay. It was already at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and at the Bush Theatre, and it's directed by Olivier winner John Britton. It's going to play London April second through May through May second, and then it's coming to the Brooklyn Academy of Music, aka Bam. Bam. 
from May 21st to June 13th. We are so giddy today. Uh, let me just tell you what it is, because it's kind of interesting. Based on the true story of Gad's relationship w with his stalker, Ooh. Yeah, Baby Reinder paints a brutally honest portrait of two people trapped by toxic ideas of gender, sexuality, power, and abuse, driven well past their breaking points. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hooked. Because I'm already like, what, got what my happens? Attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got my attention. So there you go. That's happening in the West End. Mm -hmm. And one of our stage favorites bra is bravely speaking out about something and just lending her voice for good. You are speaking of Mandy Gonzalez, who we adore, um, who plays Angelica in Hamilton. She yes. joined the cast in 2016. She's a staple over there now. So she shared on social media that she was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2019. Apparently, um, she received a diagnosis after an ultrasound last fall, and there was an earlier test that maybe didn't come back completely clean. In November, she underwent surgery. She gave a quote to People Magazine. She said, I know I'm not alone. There are so many mothers and daughters and sisters, so many people out there who are going through, the, through this, and I want them to know I stand with them. And she said, there's no shame in this. We need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I love this. I love her strength. I love Mandy Gonzalez. And she's Gonzalez. continued to perform during yeah. this whole process. Yeah, and she's, she's in the show. Um, and I'm sure she's giving out hugs at the stage door. She's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, Maybe not during Mandy flu Gonzalez? season. We don't she know. She was previously um, in, Broad uh, in, in the Heights on Broadway and Wicked and, hey, remember Lennon? Uh, I do, actually. Remember Dance of the Vampires? I remember that, too. <laughs> Didn't you have a good first date at Dance of the Vampires? I did. We can uh, talk about that later. <laughs> and Aida. Yeah. So uh, she's a fantastic uh, friend of the site, and we wish her well. And bonus, she's making her Carnegie Hall debut on Valentine's Day with the New York Pops. Ooh. So uh, we're thinking wow. of you, Mandy, and we wish you well. Thank what you. a great way to spend, thank spend thank Valentine's Day. Love sure. That. Yeah. Well. What else? Well. Megan Pacheros, Megan yeah. com. Did we talk about that yesterday? We got Soldiers Play stuff going up. Oh, yeah, a lot of Soldiers Play opening night coverage going up on the site. Um, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. So check it out. I'm out of here because um, Pearl Sun is there's here. someone from the Broadway smash come from away. Caitlin, thank you, Paul. Caitlin, please tell us about our guest. Gladly. Yes, you guys, we have Pearl Sun here with us in the studio today. She can currently be seen playing Janice and others over at uh, Come From Away. Guys, she used to be um, a cover and a standby in the show. We're going to talk all about this, but now she's playing one one role only. Um, her other Broadway credits include Turns and If Then and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. She toured the country and Next to Normal. She knows what she's doing. You guys can follow the show at We Come From Away. Leave all of your questions in the comments down below. And please welcome Pearl and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin, welcome, Pearl. Oh, we've yeah. oh, got applause in the audience today. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Tell me about your come from away journey because it's been a it's, it's been a been thing. It's been a journey. Yes, yeah. uh, I was brought on in April of 2017 mm -hmm. as a standby, and I had been with the company for a year and a half. Uh, no, 2018 uh, for a year and a half, and then uh, I played four out of my five roles. We'll get to that in a second. We'll yes. Get, yes. Um, and then I felt like my time was up as a standby with the company, even though I loved and adored everybody there. Um, so I, I graciously thanked them. You relinquished your roles. I did. I yes. said, I'm so Let sorry that, to leave, but, but I'm going to move forward. And then a couple weeks after that, I got a call to say, so we know you left us as a standby, but uh, we have a... a a bit of a pickle. We're in a bit of a pickle. We've got someone we've hired who uh, is going to be going away for three months. So That's we would like you to uh, cover that That's spot. Emily Walton. Emily Walton. Who is going to be in Darling Grenadine. It's currently Broadway. in previews. There you go. Yeah. And, uh, so, and so I said, sure. I get to focus on one role and it's Janice Mosier and she's such a great character to play. So I said, absolutely sign me up. So I'm there Back on for the rock. three months. Three months. Yes. Back on the rock. Back on the rock. So I feel like I might know what this is, but I also, even despite having covered Broadway for a very long time, <laughs> tell me what a standby is versus an understudy. Okay. So an understudy. A There's a difference. Yes. Uh, an understudy usually is someone who has a role on stage every night, eight shows a week. Like in the ensemble. Like in the ensemble. Um, and then covers a, a, another role. And standby, sit in the back and read the paper? Yeah, read the paper. They might <laughs> knit a little. They might learn another language, watch some TV. No. Uh, or watch the show and right. sit on pins and needles. And So say, are you at the theater every night? Every night. But not on stage? Not on stage. We're called at the same time as the other actors. And then we are um, asked to stay until probably the last five minutes of the show, just in case an emergency happens. Has that happened? 
Yes, it has. It's Go happened on. a couple of I times. <laughs> uh, somebody got injured from uh, being clipped with one of our set pieces. So um, she was limping off stage, and then halfway through the show, I, I happened to be on stage, and I heard a voice <laughs> that didn't sound like you put down her anymore. Knitting. Yes, and I was like, what? What's happening? And so our standby went on, and then somebody else fell ill and must have been food it poisoning happens. or something, I mean, and it's halfway through. Theater, things happen. Yeah. So you have and a lot of different costumes you know, available to you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then you were just kind of ready, at the ready to go. But now you're digging into Janice. Yes. What do you love about this character? Oh, she's just so, she, she cares so much and she has so much integrity um, and she's, she's so wide-eyed and excited for everything that's coming um, and tries really hard <laughs> and misses the mark at times, so, and, but then so reaches her, her goals by the end. Come From Away is such an interesting show because of the way it was put together. It's like this documentary style. Yeah way of writing. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about that so people understand? Yeah, it's a documentary style of writing and we were just talking about this earlier today with the matinee performance and it's such a very, it's even more important that the audience interacts with us. Oh really? They are such a huge part of our storytelling mm -hmm. um, that we, 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 need, we really feed off of their energy and whether or not they're really listening to us or with us. And if us. they're not, what happens? Uh, we, pl we we get through. We mm -hmm. continue to go through. But they are always with you because this is a very moving show. Yeah, and it, you know, by the end, we receive sort sort of what we were thinking that we'd hear throughout. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we can have audiences that wait till the end because they are listening very hard and there's a lot of things happening. Um, but at other points, they're with us every step of the way, and we can feel their energy and we can feel them with us. Um, and they are. It's just a huge. We're constantly checking in with them. Mm -hmm. You know. I have so many questions for you because Tell you me. have, well, first of all, let's just yes. find out a little bit about you. Where did you grow up? In Los Angeles, California. So you're an L.A. baby. Uh-huh. And when did you know you wanted to be a performer? Oh, God. Uh, my parents were amateur Chinese opera singers. I do not hear that every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it doesn't So what did they do happen. professionally if that was an amateur? Uh, well, my mother was a manicurist. My dad was in real estate. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but this was their passion. Yes, and every week they would meet with a group of friends and they would hire musicians and rent out a space in the community wow. center. And every week they would get together and just sing, sing all day. And my brother and I would be hiding under tables and <laughs> in the park and just annoyed that we had to listen to it. But, uh, and then once a year they would put on a production, fully staged, fully costumed and wow. everything, um, and sell tickets. And I grew up participating in a few of those productions as well. In, Full on Chinese, mm -hmm. um, and but back then, it wasn't looked at as a career option. Mm -hmm. And when I was getting to the age where I was deciding on what I was going to do for college, it just there were very few Asian faces out there in the business. And my parents just said, "You want to do what?" Because in high school, I had done a production of Cats Come called on. called Judgment on Jellicle Street. <gasps> what? what? Because. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I want the details of right. judgment. I tell God bless. Um, so my high school uh, drama teacher, she did not get the rights to Cats. Sadly. So, so she, she decided to rewrite it and <laughs> called it Judgment on Jellicle Street. And I played the prosecutor cat who sang Macavity, among other things. Okay. But, yeah, so I did that. I did mm -hmm. a production of Were you dressed Joe. as cats? Yes, we were definitely dressed as cats. We did, did our own the hand movements? Okay. makeup and everything. <laughs> Um, I did a production of uh, G um, uh, Joseph. Joseph, Joseph mm -hmm. yes, and I played the narrator there. And I did Grease, and I played Sandy. Um, so you had a lot of opportunities so I had in school. a lot of opportunities in school, and then I thought, oh, this might be interesting. My parents never attended any of those productions because they just weren't supportive of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I got to college and was taking some credits and for psychology. I mm -hmm. thought I was going to go into psychology. And then I found the theater department. And then I started to take a class here. And then my credits and my, my program was- And then there was no turning back. There was back. no turning back. And then I did a production of Closer Than Ever in college that got picked up with a local theater called the Century City Playhouse. And we got hired as college students to move our production. Where were you in college? I went to Santa Monica City College mm -hmm. to start as, in the junior college. And then I transferred to NYU to Tisch School of the Arts. 
Um, and you got serious. And then I got serious, and at closer than ever, we were hired for like a two or three month stint. My parents attended. They looked around. They saw that people it seemed real. It seemed real. There weren't friends and family there. There mm -hmm. were other people there who had paid for <laughs> no their kids tickets. under the tables. No <laughs> kids under the tables, and uh, they they said, okay, maybe maybe she's got something. And from that point forward, they've supported me all the way and seen me and everything. And so, tell me about the first call you got when you were booked in a Broadway show, because that's a big call. Well, I was. And that was Grant, right? In, uh huh. And I was in Ithaca at the time, and I was playing Irene Malloy in a production of Hello Dolly. It's nice to be working when you get another gig. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I was at some motel because <laughs> we were housed in a motel, and I went and I just was sitting down on this kind of set of dingy bed <laughs> and thought, Oh my You're god! Really painting a picture. Yeah, girl. I just just <laughs> cried and was so excited and thrilled to be be there. Okay. I know you all have a lot of questions mm -hmm. about Judgment on Jellicle Street. <laughs> before we get there, <laughs> before we get there, tell me about If Then, because that was a huge show. If Then what? was a huge show to be a part of. I was involved with every step of the development process, because I had known the team from ne my time with Next to Normal right, as well. Right, the Tom Kitt and that whole team. Michael Greif and Brian Yorkey mm -hmm. and all of them. Yeah. So uh, that was just such a huge learning experience, because I tend to be known as the reading queen really? and labs and workshops. With <laughs> um, and then to see it all come to fruition and have all the changes we did the out of town in DC mm -hmm. and then brought it and over. And they were really working on it the whole time and oh, making yeah. adjustments. Oh yeah. And I just I thought it was a magical production. And Adina Menzel was at, you know, like the height of the frozen Yes, right? It, situation. Right when we were in DC, Frozen came out. And so she had and then hosted that song us. was everywhere. Oh God, it was everywhere. And she was also in the midst of the Oscars, like having to be flown out. Adele Dazeem stuff. Adele Dazeem, and, and it was in the middle of our previews. We were about to open. Right. So she juggled all of it. She was incredible. She's incredible. But it was an, a wonderful experience. And then, um, and prior to that, I was with Next to Normal, which was an incredible experience. And, and talk about to... going on halfway into the show. I did that once. In that show? Oh, yeah. That's an intense show. It's an intense show. I was watching the show, and, and poor Alice was really sick, had, had a cold, but she, you know, she had so many fans that wanted to see her, so she tried to push through. And then I go backstage during intermission, and my stage manager says, get your clothes on your own. <gasps> so um, you know, you get a little electroshock therapy, you're Caucasian and blonde, and then you walk out <laughs> Asian and, you know, and raven-haired. But the audience went with it. I'm sure they, they were didn't. they Actually, we were in Seattle at the time, and I was told by the staff there that they had never received more fan emails and calls being grateful that that had happened because, you know, the, it was being advertised as don't miss the Tony winning performance right. of. So people, even if they weren't familiar with her work, would think they were missing something if I was on. And then, but they got to see both of us. Right. So they, they were got to see happy. her try. Yeah. And then you yeah. step in. And step in. And then, and they love that too, right? I mean, oh, audiences love one, when things go down and theater. when turntables don't work and when people forget their lines. They love that kind of stuff. <laughs> they do. They do. We also like when it works. Just well, <laughs> of, of course, of course. <laughs> but, you know, they feel like they're a part of something. All yeah. right. Let's take some questions from yes. our viewers, Caitlin. Uh, yes. Okay. So first question first is, Lar would like to know about the chairography that goes into Come oh, From Jesus Away. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is a Jesus serious, Christ. This is a serious question. Jesus. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so serious. So when I was learning... Uh, this is choreography with chairs. People yes. When I was learning along. the show, it was interesting because we were in the studio a lot and we would have folding chairs. They all looked the same mm -hmm. with numbers taped onto them because each chair, we have 14 chairs we deal with, this is high tech, yeah. and they're all v distinctly different and unique. And you need to make sure you put the right chair in the right spot at the right time, because otherwise you're screwing up the entire show. Oh my god. No pressure. no pressure, none, <laughs> zero pressure. And then in the studio, you're supposed to pretend that it's moving. So you kind of have to adjust accordingly. It's just pretend. Just pretend. Um, but again, our producers are wonderful that they actually finance for the standbys or for anybody to go on stage, work with the turntable, work with the real chairs and the set, and bring crew in 
regularly. Every week they have rehearsal. So it, helpful. it's very helpful. And it's necessary. The, the nature of the show is such that you just have to. So what's the hardest thing about the choreography? I love that word, by the way. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's good. Just <laughs> making sure you're getting them in the right spot at the right time. Gotcha. And you had how many tracks that you were doing this? I four? learned five of them. I okay. performed four of them. I learned five of them. And That's now I chairs. only have to focus on one. <laughs> Thank God. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. So Shannon wants to know, how was it for you learning the accent of the people oh, from yeah. the West? Oh. Let's go up to Canada and tell us all about how that sounds. Well, uh, we have a wonderful uh, dialect coach, Joel Goldis. Hi, Joel. Sure um, he's not watching. <laughs> he might be. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, we each get to have individual time with him. And he's based out of LA, so we s do Skype sessions with him. So we, I think we get about uh, you know a couple hours, mm -hmm. each of us, or each role. So <laughs> what's the hardest word to say in this dialect? Car. Mm -hmm. Car. <laughs> I, and, it, and it's a tricky thing, because the Are you saying car? Like I'm saying car, like car. automobile. Car. You're saying car. 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 Um, learning, but it, it's it's a cross between Canadian and Irish. Yeah, it's not Irish, and it's not Canadian, and so that you know people would veer to the Irish. And, and how you, do you, you say the name of the place? It's Gander, Newfoundland, Newfoundland, Newfoundland. I'm never gonna get it right. <laughs> you just I did. always say it wrong. You okay. just did. Gander, Newfoundland. You did great. Nailed You're hired. <laughs> I'll take my car. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I gotta work on it. I gotta work on it. You're hired. Yeah. Oh, yes. thanks. I <laughs> love it. All right. right. I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, we can do one more question. Okay. So Rebecca wants to know, obviously this show has so many fans. What is it like for you to be able to hear from the fans at Stage Door and the fan reactions during the show? You know, to get that kind of response for every performance is such a gift and it's so rare and I've never experienced it in my career ever. Mm. Um, the fact that they can go from crying and audibly, and I can see them crying in certain moments, and then belly laughing, and then by the end of the show, so uplifted that they are on their feet, cheering and clapping, along with our incredible band. And then to go to the stage door and hear from survivors or hear from people who have lost loved ones, mm -hmm. still, it's it, it, pretty much every show we have somebody that's had some sort of direct connection with 9-11. And 9 they want to have that human connection with and the cast. And they do, and they, wanna, they just want to tell you their story, tell you where they were at the time, tell you who they've lost, um, thank us for telling their story. It's, uh, it doesn't get better than that. I love that. Well, thank you for coming, Pearl. Thank you, you guys, for having me. Go see Come From Away. Come on, come, come take see the us. Take a car. I'm not gonna take take, <laughs> take a car it. or a train. <laughs> That sounds the same. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And Caitlin, will you take us on out, please? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. And you can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow and talk to Bubba Weiler of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child.